Hey everybody, how's it going? This is Danny, the Wicked Awesome Gardener. Have you ever had issues in your garden like aphids, mealybugs, hornworms? Well, today I'm gonna to talk about organic pest control methods using bugs to fight bugs. Yes, it is insect warfare. One of the easiest ways to control pests in your garden is to let mother nature take care of it for you. This reduces your need to spray your plants, to use harmful chemicals. So today we're going to talk about beneficial bugs in the garden. Now, some of these you can purchase and have delivered to you to release into your garden, but the easiest way to do it is to plant things that will naturally attract those insects into your garden to have them come and eat your pest bugs. Before we get going, I just wanna let you know that this video is another installment in the educational How to Grow a Garden series for Shed Wars Global Gardening 2022. Don't know what Shed Wars is? Check out my playlist full of Shed Wars videos on my channel. I will put a link down in the description. But the short story is Shed Wars is a friendly competition that is held every year by the channels Will It Grow and Homestead Aquarius. Their links will also be in the video description. You should definitely go check them out. And it's a competition that is held to see which team can produce the most food for their family. And during the series, we have to produce 12 educational videos on how to grow gardens. And that's really the mission here, to encourage people, the members of the teams, as well as the world in general, to grow your own food, to be better gardeners, be able to be more self-sufficient, save more money, and to better feed your families. So definitely go check out both of those channels, Will It Grow, Homestead Aquarius, as well as the other almost 60 channels that are participating in this competition this year. Also, if you are not already subscribed to my channel, go ahead and click the subscribe button, give this video a thumbs up, and talk to me in the comments about issues that you're having with pests. All right, let's get to the bugs. Once we've gone over each of these beneficial insects, I'm going to give you a list of things that you can plant to attract them into your garden. So the first one I want to talk about is the big mama, the praying mantis. These guys eat everything. They will eat aphids, they will eat mealybugs and caterpillars and mites. They just, anything in your garden that you don't want there, they're gonna eat it. The only thing I would caution you about when buying praying mantis uthika or egg cases to release them in your garden is to make sure that you specifically look for the native species, the Carolina mantis, and not the Chinese mantis. The Chinese mantis is an invasive species. Some people will argue that they've been naturalized because they've been here for a hundred years, but being here for a long time does not mean that they are not invasive and they are not potentially harmful to your garden because they are larger than our native mantis. And so they are large enough to catch things like bees butterflies, and even hummingbirds. Seriously, there are videos on YouTube of praying mantis on hummingbird feeders and they just wait and So definitely look for the Carolina mantis. You know that it's Carolina mantis if the egg sac or uthika is long and cylindrical. If it's round like a puffball, then that's the Chinese mantis and that's what you want to avoid. Next up, another bug that I'm sure all of you are familiar with, the ladybug. These are a powerhouse. They eat aphids. They eat small caterpillars, mealybugs, thrips. Even better than ladybugs themselves are the ladybug larvae. Those things are aphid-eating machines. When I'm on my Facebook gardening groups, they're one of the most common larvae that I see posted. I'll see pictures, what is this? What is this? Do I kill it? And everybody's like, no, stop, ladybug larva, leave it, leave it. <laughs> then there's the soldier beetle, and this guy does double duty because he is an ambush predator that will hide in or on large blossoms, and he will go for aphids and for caterpillars. So while he's there, he's also pollinating your plants. Another dual purpose insect in the garden is the hoverfly. Not only do they pollinate when they are feeding on the sweet nectar of a plant, they also eat aphids, scale, mealybugs, and thrips. The females will actually lay their eggs among colonies of aphids so that their young have plenty to feed off of when they catch. 
Hunting under the cover of darkness, we have lace wings. This nocturnal predator loves aphids. And they're another bug that will lay their eggs specifically in aphid colonies to ensure that their young have a huge food supply. If you struggle with mosquitoes and gnats while you're out working in your garden, you definitely want to be attracting dragonflies and damselflies. These both prey on any sort of flying insect and mosquitoes especially. Here's a species I've never actually seen. I don't know if they're around in the Northeast or if I just haven't noticed them, but the big eyed bug, which I thought was a really funny name. But this goofy eyed predator loves aphids and caterpillars. It will use its proboscis to just suck the fluid right out from inside. Here's one that would have been very, very helpful for me to know about as a beginning gardener when I had a massive infestation of spider mites but there are actually predatory mites that you can attract into your garden or purchase, and they are called persimilis mites. It's a predatory mite that feeds very, very heavily on those red spider mites. Lace wings will feed on spider mites as well. And who can forget spiders? You can't have a list of beneficial garden bugs without listing spiders. Whether they have webs or they are ambush predators, spiders are going to be taking care of a multitude of pest bugs in your garden. Last but not least are parasitic wasps. These are good pollinators, not as effective as your honeybees or bumblebees, but they do do a good job with this. But their big benefit to the gardener is that they lay their eggs in tomato hornworm. So if you ever see a tomato hornworm that's crawling around and has little white bumps on the back, little white eggs growing out of it, those are the eggs of the parasitic wasp. Those larvae will hatch and they will go and eat the hornworm from the inside out. So you don't want to pick that off even though you're so tempted. Ah, oh, gotta save my tomato plant. I gotta get rid of that hornworm. Leave it because it's going to be dead very, very soon. So it's not going to be able to do much more damage and it's carrying the next generation of parasitic wasps that will be going out and laying their eggs in the other tomato hornworms. Now, what can we plant to attract these predators to our gardens? The good thing is that most of the plants on this list are going to attract multiple species of these predatory insects and bugs and arachnids into our garden. So let's get to the list. Many of these are probably already things that you have planted in your garden, like marigolds, zinnias, cosmos, dill, cilantro, lemon balm, mint, parsley, sunflowers, also things like yarrow, tansy, goldenrod, catnip, fennel, feverfew, alyssum. Alyssum is really good for bringing in parasitic wasps. Praying mantis also really like raspberry canes and angelica. This is just a short list. There are many more, but these are some of the most commonly grown. Hopefully you found this information beneficial and that this will really help you bring those predators in and bring balance to your garden's ecosystem. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit subscribe if you aren't already. Hit the bell icon so that you get notifications and stay up to date on all my new videos. Leave me a comment. Talk to me about the pests in your garden. Hopefully I can help you out with that. And I will see you guys in our next video. Bye bye